everyone. It's Anna Marie and I'm here doing a video today to show you how I did my piece called Where the Poppies Grow. Uh, this is a very special piece of, of mine that I did uh, for everyone who is serving in the Canadian US Army or the Canadian Forces and uh, how very proud we all are of those who serve. So it's uh, close to my heart. So I'm going to give you a or show you a video uh, from beginning to end on how I came up with this unique design. And this is on a 12 by 18 um, canvas board. Okay. But for the demo, I'm going to be using a 11 by 14 canvas board. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, um, these canvas boards, they come in white usually. So I, uh, to do this technique, you have to have an off color background, okay? I use the antique white and the Americana. Uh, that gave me a nice um, antique looking background because we're going to apply tissue paper to this background before we uh, apply our, our really cool colors. Okay, so I'm going to get my tissue paper and show you the ones that I did or used. I had a whole um, pile of this order from a company. As you can see, it has crows on it, but the paper itself is very thick and it's a lot thicker than the normal uh, Dollar Tree or Dollar Store um, gift wrap. That is very thin. And that's okay if you're painting over it, making a nice texture. But I found this really nice. It's got a very nice silicone feel to it. And this is what I use. Uh, I have a lot of these. So if anyone uh, orders a pattern, uh, either, well, if you order the pattern from my website, annamarieoakdesigns.com, uh, I will put in a couple of these sheets so you can use them with your pattern. See how cool they are. Having the crow uh, on them just adds to the background, as you'll see in a minute when we get going. Okay, so I'm going to take a sheet and I'm going to put my water here. And I'm gonna place my board. I, know I have two here just for backup, but I'm gonna place my board down and I'm gonna put my tissue paper right over my board, okay? And I'll show you how I do a really cool tip on how I, I don't use scissors because I like the jagged edges, okay? So I use my faux sable, uh, my large one inch faux sable by Dynasty. And I will go through uh, the brushes with you once we get our piece set here to our uh, canvas board. So I wet my brush just in water, just plain water. And I go right around, wet right around the edge of my canvas board that I'm working on. Okay, there you go. Okay. And I take my paper up and I tear off the edge. See how cool that is? It comes right off the edge. You can also take your brush and just kind of keep wetting the sides and it will tear off very easily to the very edge, okay? And one sheet is enough to do two or three pieces. So I will put a couple of sheets of the tissue paper in with your pattern packet. So you can get the feel of the tissue paper and, you know, to see how it feels, okay? Now I am going to take that up from my canvas. Just take it away so it doesn't stick on. The tears a little, we're okay with that. Alrighty, we're okay. Alrighty. So there's our tissue paper. That's going to be, we're going to use on our background. Okay. I have a piece that I did just before I did this video. And you can see how I adhered it to the canvas board with the deco art decoupage. OK, 
okay. I'm you. I use a uh, deco art, uh, decoupage the napkin. You can use the paper by decoupage, or the antique. They have a lot of different, and even the mat. And I have a few of those in my uh, studio as well. I had a whole shipment come uh, for my representative there in uh, Ontario. And so I have those in my studio to sell as well, the decoupage. Okay. So what we're going to do now is take our pattern from our pattern packet. And we're going to place it underneath our tissue paper like this. So you can see the line drawing. Okay. You can see the markings so that we can trace out our drawing on our tissue paper. Now, I like to use a pencil and it's just an HB number two regular pencil and I trace out my poppies like so. And even the ones that are coming off or look like it's hidden in underneath the frame. That's really cool as well. So you, you don't have to be too precise. You're just tracing them out and press a little harder than what you would normally press. Believe it or not, um, the markings of the pencil, the carbon, once the decoupage is placed on and uh, adhered to the canvas board. The markings come out a lot darker. So that's pretty cool. We get to see them a lot better. These are a couple of little buds. And you can see I don't mind uh, the crows being there. I'm okay with that. It just kind of it'll blend into uh, the background. Okay. Now, when I designed this pattern packet, um, I wanted it to be for uh, larger pieces. I paint in a lot, I do a lot of large pieces. So what I did, uh, you'll get your pattern in, in your packet, but I said, continue on, right? So what you did, if you're doing 11 by 14 is fine, but if you're doing a large piece, you just trace out your hair, then you move, move it over, keep tracing. It's continuous, it's a flow. Uh, I did a beautiful piece, commission piece, for a lady over her sofa, and it was uh, six feet long, uh, three feet wide, six feet long, and she wanted just a whole collection of poppies. It was beautiful, and I did it in this in this uh, technique, and uh, it was quite beautiful, I must say. It was uh, too well. So we have our poppies traced out. I can, I don't know. Yeah, we can see them on the camera there. That's pretty cool. So what we'll do now, I like to use stamp for the background. Okay. If you were using a, just a plain piece of tissue paper or whatever, uh, you would either stamp using stamp, ink and stamping, but I'm going to use uh, one of my stencils. The crafters workshop and it's a music stencil you can use that or you can use this one here it's the cookie and cake stencil by the crafters workshop and i have a whole supply of those two in my studio so i just used my um, music one um, just earlier but i'm going to try this one for you Let's see what it looks like maybe we'll do both okay and when we stencil, I like to use the Stencil Pro by Dynasty. There you go. It's a really cool swirly uh, stencil. I like this one for backgrounds and for ornaments and stuff. And it's really easy to uh, handle, which is pretty great. Uh, I like to use the Stencil Pro by Dynasty. Uh, they come in a lot of different sizes. I like the one inch or the one and a quarter. I have both sizes there and the one or the one and a quarter. Um, also the half inch, 
are really cool and the quarter inch are really nice to use as well. So for this particular stencil, I'm going to use the half inch. And what I do, I get my palette. I just use a styrofoam plate and I use Americana uh, black and pour it on my palette. I like to use a dry brush, okay? Your Stencil Pro needs to be dry before you use it, all righty? So what I do, I get a paper towel handy. Now you just need to take your time because this is being recorded. You can stop and do half one day and half the next. That's the beauty of watching videos and things of uh, us doing different classes. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to take my stencil pro and I'm going to push into the black. All righty. I'm not only loading my outside of my stencil brush, but I'm also loading the inside. And you can see how I'm really pushing. I'm then going to take a paper towel and I'm going to squeeze off the excess. All righty, squeeze off the excess. Now I'm going to go to my paper, okay? And we'll just go start probably up in the left-hand corner and we'll add a little bit of the stencil pattern, which is really cool. You can see, look at that, isn't that cool? And it doesn't matter if you stay away from the flowers or the poppies is just that if you go right over them you'll um, it'll be a little hard for you to see them so we can just do here and there and you can see I'm not really sweating at this I'm just going wherever I want to there you go so we'll continue even down in our greenery okay we'll add a little bit of swirls this is really cool this stencil and you can go on my website annamarieoakdesigns.com and now you can see what patterns i have there and these stencils are fairly new so these are not on my website but you can uh, email me uh, i have my email address annamarie860 at gmail.com and uh, i can ship it to you so there we go, maybe a little up here and it's easy peasy, there you go, oops. And that was one load off the black into your Stencil Pro and that was it. So as it goes on, it uh, dries almost instantly. So that's our background. Also, if you wanted to use the um, music notes, which I love as well, if you did mainly of one stencil, you can just hit a little bit of another stencil on the side, maybe here and there. And that was the same loaded brush, okay? It's pretty cool, maybe up here. So just less of one, more of another. All righty, okay, and that's good. So those are the two stencils that I'm using on this piece today for the background already. And they're the Crafters Workshop and I do have them for sale in my uh, studio and on, uh, on my website. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, leave my stencil brush there on a wet paper towel. So in case I may need it further down the road, I may not, but you never know. Okay, now we're gonna take our um, board, which we base coated with antique white, and I just base coated that with my number one faux sable, my one inch faux sable, and I used uh, the antique white for that. There you go. And that color really uh, dulls the white and look, will look nice underneath our uh, tissue paper. Okay, so I'm going to use. Um, the deco art mat, okay? Just because I like the silicone feel to the tissue paper 
And the mat just enhances that, okay? So I'm using the decoupage mat. And I like to use the size, let me see, uh, um, probably um, an American dollar. How's that sound? Not a lot. You can always add more to it. Okay. Now, my one inch faux sable is wet already, so we're fine. And I just load up my decoupage and I give my, my surface a really nice full coat, full coverage of the decoupage matte finish. Decoupage uh, uh, by DecoArt, they made this decoupage it's so cool. It's a sealer, a finisher, a, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful finish on it and easy to paint over once it's on there. So that's the cool part about it. Okay, go. And it's easy to see if you missed a spot because uh, it's a, a antique white background and the matte finish or the decoupage is white so you can see. Now we're gonna need a little bit more of the decoupage. So just pour up a little bit. Okay. I don't like to waste my supplies because they're so precious to me that I just use a little and add more if I need to. Okay, so we're going to add this tissue paper to our artist board. I'd like to add it to the top first, okay? And just touch it with your finger to the top. There you go. I'm still holding up on the bottom because it adheres really fast. And I now brush over that tissue paper. And there you go. With the decoupage matte medium and give it a nice coat. Now, you can see that I tore off too much there. You can have yours a little bit more neat, but I don't care about that because that's just going to add a little bit of uniqueness to my mixed media piece, okay? And there's something I wanted to talk to you about uh, if you tore a piece out. Don't overlap. Like if you want to put a piece right here, for example. All righty, we, we can tear a piece off of our paper. And I'll just have a little piece here to fill it in. Okay, if you wanted to, I'll just show you. So say if I wanted to fill in this area here, I would decoupage and I would go really close to the edge. Do not go overlap it and then decoupage it because you will see uh, underneath as well and it'll just stick out like a sore thumb. But I'm going to leave it off for now because I like that. Not too precise, not too perfect, just like life, right? You can also see that I'm seeing my pencil markings really, really good there. I don't know if you can pick it up there, but you can see the black markings that I'm able to see where I'm going to uh, apply the texture. Now, I think we have that all covered in a really nice good coat. Any leftover little straggler pieces I just tear off and that gets really easy to tear off as well once the decoupage is uh, on there. Okay so we're just going to let that dry for a moment and I'm going to go over my brushes that I'm using today for this technique. Um, the pattern is called Where the Poppies Grow. And it's a Pebio by Trail, which is a liquid uh, oil that we like to use. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. But I'm going to go over the, the brushes first of all before we get into the paints, okay? Uh, my go to brushes that I love are my faux sables uh, the one inch, the 
three quarter and the num and the half inch. Okay, those are the three uh, I use mainly for my acrylics, my mixed media. They're my everyday brushes, plus my black gold script liner. Can't live without those. Those are my go-to. These are all on my website as well. Okay, uh, the faux sable rake is my favorite for my Santa boot toppings, my feathers, my hair, uh, foliage, like my grass and all that. I love my faux sable rake. It's a three quarter inch and I love it for my bigger pro projects. We're also gonna be using today uh, the eye of the tiger. Okay, those are my brushes that I use for my uh, Pebeo by Trail. The Eye of the Tiger, the large one is three quarter. The flat one is number 10 and the round is a four. They come in a set of three at a really cool price and they're on my website. So you can go there to see them. Why I use the Eye of the Tiger with my oils main reason. I love the way they blend uh, with the liquid oils, but I also love the belly of the brush. It's thick and it holds a lot of the liquid oil in there while you're painting and, and they're a, a must for your uh, oil paints and whatever. And I people use them also and have good uh, good results with acrylics as well. So you, you just don't have to really stick with oils, okay? But I love them as my kind of my kit with my Pebeo as well. Alrighty, so that's those. And well, of course, we're, we're using pencil to uh, mark in our markings. Uh, what else can I show you here while we're waiting? Oh, were you going to be using a palette knife as well? This, I've, you can use a, a try, a tri, I like the triangle steel ones, okay? Because they got a lot of spring to them, right? For the texture paste. Um, these, they're well-worn, and but I love them. They're my go-to. And they've got a nice point, not too sharp at the point, but nice for uh, making the textured flowers on my piece. So that's a must too that you need to have also is the palette knife, okay? Um, the texture paste that I'm gonna be using today is my very own Anna Marie's Let's Paint and Create texture paste. Uh, I sell this on my website. You can go to it, AnnaMarieOakDesigns.com and you can see this texture paste, okay? I love it because it's always nice and thick and creamy new one here that I'm using and you can see here that I love the way it's so creamy okay and really nice for doing my my texture I want you to use what you have okay so if any of you have uh, the deco art texture paste uh, deco art media texture paste this is really cool also and it's a bit thinner but I like to use this on backgrounds and stuff and it, uh, you know, it works as well. So I'll be using a little bit of that to show you how that works as well. Okay. Now our piece is drawing. I don't like to use a hair dryer on this. Um, I kind of like to let it dry so that it just uh, eases into it. Okay. Sometimes um, when you use a hair dryer, uh, the paper just kind of crackles and whatever. So just let it dry. It uh, doesn't take very long, 15 minutes usually, and like there's a couple spots there. But we can go ahead and uh, texture in our flowers and our background while it's still wet, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. I'm gonna get myself another clean palette and I'm going to just move my piece right here for a minute. There we go. And I'm going to put a, I like to call it a dollop, but I use my palette knife and I put about that much, probably a little more, okay, on my palette. 
wiping it down like that and uh, cleaning off the back of my palette knife in between a paper towel, okay? That cleans up your palette knife so that it's not all, all over your hands and all over your piece. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna do the, the poppies, okay? And you can, I can see my line drying my there really well. And as this dries out more, uh, you can see it, it really pops out. So using the pencil is a great idea. And using the, your paper, the tissue paper is transparent. So you're able to see through it, which is really cool. Okay, now I'm going to start over on the left-hand side of my piece, of my poppies. And I'm gonna take, use my palette knife from the back, okay? So I'm gonna take about that much off my texture paste. And I'm going to go up to the left-hand side and I'm going to form my poppies. Now, you can see as I'm forming, I'm forming, making ridges, okay? And that's okay. It's a little one down here and the center. Add a bit more, here we go, and come down. Make the front of the poppy, there you go. So you just move ahead uh, with the other poppies. There's another one down here. I'm using the toe off my palette knife, which is this part, to form my poppies, okay? And I'm not digging into it too much. I'm kind of laying it down and forming my, my poppies. If you see the background through it, don't worry about it. That's just gonna make a shadow in the background, okay? So it's very forgiving. And I'm gonna take a bit more on the toe and just kind of form it. There you go. Now I'm gonna to move towards the center of my piece and I'm going to form a poppy there. Poppies grow um, all over the place kind of and they uh, some are bigger than others. Uh, I just love red. Red is one of my favorite colors. Now if you can't get the bottom really shaped good just turn your piece around. There you go and you can shape the bottom without much hassle. Now this poppy right here, um, it kind of goes over that background poppy. So we did the background one first and I'm going to kind of go over. There you go. You're going to kind of pretend that the background ones aren't there. See that? Good. And I'll turn it around. You can turn it around if you find it easier to form. There you go, you're gonna form. So you can see already the ridges are forming. Um, you can see down into that center there where you're gonna be adding your center of your poppies um, and it's starting to, to take shape. So let's do over here and you can see how having the crows on the tissue paper, it doesn't matter. Uh, it just adds a little mystery to the background. And I'm just going to do this one here and I'm going to talk about the background on my piece. Okay, so we're going to start up here. Some of these poppies come off the side, which is perfectly okay. That just adds to the uniqueness of our piece. Alrighty, we can't be too perfect in this unperfect world, hey? There you go. Although this world is so nice that we're able to paint and we're able to create. My goodness, I wouldn't want my life without creativity. So much fun. You meet so many neat people on your journey that uh, it's so amazing. Okay, there's another one here. And I'm just going to, and like I told you, this is 11 by 14 piece. It's a lot smaller than my uh, original one. 
And but you can do this right on. You can have it as long as you want. Just continue. If you had a long piece of canvas or whatever, you just keep making your poppies. Just keep going with it. Okay. There's no right or wrong. Now there's one poppy right here down on the bottom. There we go. And forming it, keeping the ridges, okay? Don't be afraid to keep those ridges there. That's what's gonna make our highlight, our, where our paints will go over the ridges, causing highlights and fall into the valleys, the dips and valleys to make our uh, shades and shadows. So there's a little pod. I'm gonna put a pod over here now, put three of them together. So the pod just goes like that and just kind of go with the toe, all righty. Just make like a circle movement and I'm putting it right into my camera there in the movement and come down into a outside of your pod, okay? So we'll do that again. Just make with the toe, you're making a circle and scrape over to the side. Now we probably made a little bit more than we should have there, but just wipe it back a little, that'll dry. It'll be fine. Most of this is gonna be covered with color, so we're not to worry. And let's do another one, there you go. So those are the three pods. You just make, load your um, texture paste with your toe off your palette knife and then you go make a circle and scrape a lot. See that? Pretty cool. Now for the bottom, okay, our piece is almost dried underneath. So that took probably about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on how uh, warm of an area you're in. Um, you will feel this. It's so cool. The background is just like a silicone feel to it. And you're going to love it. So I will put these in the pattern packet, okay? If you order the pattern packet, I will uh, put a couple sheets in there so you have lots to play with. I'm going to add another pod up here just to cover up that background to show you how really cool that's going to look. A lot of you will probably say, oh, that looks like a boo-boo, but no, not to worry. There you go. Make a little pod there. Alrighty, so I'm going to add another little bit of this texture paste and we're going to do the background greenery. Okay, and I'm also going to add a bit of the DecoArt Media Texture Paste because they, they make a lot of really cool products. And uh, I just, I tried this too, and it's really cool. You're able to see through this a little bit more than my texture paste, okay? Mine is okay, good for the flowers in the bottom, but when I was introduced to the, the DecoArt Media line, the texture paste, I thought, oh, how cool is that? So I'm just gonna take up a little bit of that texture paste on the flat part of my knife, on the first third of my knife, and I'm just going to apply it, bring it down, just like you be making leaves and I'm gonna hold it this way so you can see me do it, okay? Now, put it this way and, okay, let's see, here we go, alrighty. So I'll just take my texture paste and on the side of my palette knife, see what I'm doing? I'm making lines and ridges, and I'm also gonna make a few leaves with the toe of my palette knife, shapes of leaves. See that, just shapes. There, there, and we're gonna let it dry. Okay, and take a little bit more of the texture paste, bringing it down, filling in your bottom half or third off your piece. Okay. 
So I think we're good. Alrighty. I'm gonna let that dry out a little and we're gonna talk a little bit about the products we're gonna use. And I'm gonna show you on my um, original piece in a moment now. I'm just gonna make sure I clean my palette knife because that texture paste dries really, really hard, okay? So you have to uh, make sure that you really wipe off your excess. Okay, we're great. Alrighty, so it's drying and believe it or not, it's drying as we're speaking. So uh, if, you, if you did want to dry this with a hair dryer, make sure it's on a cool setting, okay? Uh, hot will make it crack and crackle and we like cracks and crackle, but depending on how thick that the texture paste is, it may crack a little too much for you, okay? So I'm fine letting it dry on its own because we got lots to talk about, okay? I'm gonna first begin by coming back to my original and maybe I think I will, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go up and show uh, back to my other camera, there we go. And here we are, here we are. So I'm gonna go back to my original piece. Uh, you can see in the background a uh, little bit of the uh, stenciling in the background and through here on the bottom where it dries you can see through that was with the deco art media texture paste this is with my texture paste over here and you'll notice uh, in the bottom corner down here it's a little dark and that's the, the look I wanted it to get. So we'll get that with the paint when we start using it. The lines we'll be getting with our cream relief. Okay, it's done in a tube. Uh, it's very easy to apply. And I'll be showing you those in a moment. And the little seed beads, I have those as well. Okay, to put in your pattern packet little package off them. Many of you will have your own seed beads and things, but they're pretty cool to use. So I'll be showing you that in a moment. So I'm going to go back to our other camera. And here we go, we'll go back here. And there we are. Okay. So we used our uh, Let's Paint and Create uh, Anna Marie Texture Paste for using our background. And I also uh, incorporated the DecoArt Media Texture Paste as well. I'm liking that too. This is more transparent, which is good for the backgrounds uh, and underneath or whatever. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And of course, we'll just go through the brushes another minute here doing the brushes. The Faux Sable are my go-to, the one inch, the three quarter and the half inch and the black gold script liner. And they're on my website, AnnaMarieOakDesigns.com. And of course my Faux Sable, great, which I love for doing um, snowman hair, uh, beards, feathers, hair, whatever. The fringes on scarves, you name it. Santa's boots for the fur on top of those. This is the rake that I use for that. Also for the Pebio by Trail uh, is the Eye the Tiger, the three quarter, the number four and the 10. And they come in a set of three in a set, okay, on the website. I applied my texture paste with a palette knife and I used the steel part or the steel, um, palette knives instead of the plastic. I like the spring back, okay? The feel of that. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about, and of course I use the DecoArt matte decoupage for our applying the tissue paper, okay? To the background. And we use the beautiful, uh, the Crafters Workshop stencils. And I have those on my website as well. Okay, and there's six by six stencils, the cookie and cake stencil. And this one is by Carmen Medlin, the swirls. I love swirls and uh, all that. So they're pretty cool to use. Alrighty. 
So we're going to talk a little bit now about our colors that we're going to be using. I'm just going to move my piece to the side a little. There we go. And uh, we're going to be using the Pebio by Trail. By Try, I guess, if you're French, but I call it by Trail. That's how it's spelled. V-I-T-R-A-I-L. And the by Trail is a transparent oil paint, okay? It's uh, transparent. Uh, you can use it on glass. Uh, I use it doing glasses. I paint bottles. I use it on my texture. I use it a lot for a lot and to incorporate into a lot of my acrylic pieces as well to use as a glaze over my acrylics. Gives it a really nice glaze, okay? So this is the red, the number 12 crimson. Uh, this is the number 22 Pebio by Trail green gold. This is the number 15 Pebio by Trail and it's a black. And this is a lightning medium, okay? The Pebio by Trail lightning medium. So for the project today, um, these are the colors you will be using. And you'll be using a Pebio cream relief, which comes in a tube like this. And it's, uh, this is a black one, which you're gonna be using. I also carry the black or the gold. They're the only two colors that I use and they're on my website. So we're gonna be having fun with these. Um, I use uh, the Pebio by Trail and I pour them in uh, bottle caps, okay? Uh, small ones for small projects, bigger ones for bigger areas. So today we're going to be doing a bit bigger of an area for the red and the green and the lightning medium. So I use them like that. I put them on a, a styrofoam plate and that way it uh, you can kind of make sure that they don't um, waste on you, okay? So that's what we do. We put them on a styrofoam plate and we'll pour them. Okay, so I'm going to begin by pouring them. And this is the lightning medium. And we're going to, you, these are the student, student sizes that I sell on my website, but these are my larger ones that I use for in class. So you can use that as well or pour from here. It's, it's no big deal. There you go. And I pour, I get in the, the camera. There you go. And I fill up that bottle cap. Okay. And I put the cover back on. The red, red crimson, I pour into the other bottle cap like so. And that one aside. The green gold is a beautiful green gold. It's a vintage look to it. It's a number 22 green gold. And I love that color too as well. So we pour that up. Now, when you look at your colors, and no, it's not because it's on camera, but they all look black, don't they? The only one that you can actually see what it, what it is, is a lightning medium, which is a clear, oily product there. The other two, uh, you can't really know, notice what they are. So what I do, I like to take a Q-tip or even the end of your paintbrush, but you can take a Q-tip and you can dip into your bottle cap and mark the side off your paper plate what your color is. So that's green and red and lightning medium, okay? Uh, I sell those colors and I also sell, there's a turquoise blue uh, there's the orange, although we can mix our yellow, uh, number 11 yellow. I love that as well. That's my sunflower yellow. I can even lighten my yellows with the lightning medium. So you're, um, you know, you're able to mix colors to make the orange, the red and the yellow makes a beautiful deep orange, especially for sunflowers and things like that. 
and uh, so that you're able to mix them, which is very, uh, very cool to be able to do. Okay, so that's our, right now our texture is almost there. It's almost drying. And you can see how neat we made the ridges and stuff there. See, that's pretty cool. We'll let it dry another minute or so. I'm going to show you something here that when I first start doing this unique uh, design with the texture and the tissue paper, this was my very first piece I did. And it was called uh, Evening in Paris. Maybe I'll turn back my camera so you can get a good look at it here, get a shot of it. Here we go. So this was called Evening in Paris. It was my very first cake on it, okay? How I came up with doing this unique designs with the tissue paper and stamping and all that, this paper in the background was at a home goods. I was in Maine and I love the home goods. And uh, I thought, oh, there's a Paris gift wrap. It was a Paris gift wrap paper. I picked it up and I, when I went home, I designed this piece with it. So instead of picking up 20 packages of gift wrap so I'd have enough for everybody, I only picked up one. Of course, when I'd done a few designs of these and taught it, I had none left. So when I went back to Home Goods again, there was none left. So I had to keep searching uh, for different gift wraps and things that were thicker and not just like the ordinary white gift wrap that we get at the dollar stores and that. So I did, I locked in with the Crow gift wrap, right? And they come in big sheets. Um, I ordered it when I ordered my Crow bags that I had for my studio actually. And I loved it, I love Crows. I have two Crows that uh, are in my driveway now as we speak actually. And uh, they're, they're quite intelligent, I love them. So that's how I came with this piece, Evening in Paris. Okay, this is the texture and the leaves. This, this is the cream relief, okay, and the cream relief. And the spokes, I don't know if you can pick it up there very well, but the spokes are done with uh, the cream relief and very easy to do. So that's a pretty cool piece too. Maybe I'll have to do a YouTube on that one as well, because being my very first piece, um, it's very nice to... Uh, fun to do. Okay, I'm going to bring you down to the other camera. There we go. So now, what else can I talk to you about? Okay, I think we're, yeah, we're there. We're there. There's a, probably a little tiny bit over here on the bottom part, but we'll do the top um, poppies first. Okay, so we're going to begin and I'm going to lay my piece here. So I'm right in the camera. I'm going to move my containers over here. Uh, just notice this there again. This one I just mentioned to you, uh, Evening in Paris, my very first packet. This one is uh, available as well, still available. So all on my website and uh, annamarieoakdesigns.com. Okay, so we have our... Pebio. Also, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the cleanup uh, for the Pebio where it's oil. I like to use the mineral spirits, the odorless, and this one I bought at Walmart. Okay, so it's uh, clean strip odorless mineral spirits. I use odorless uh, to keep the odors down and I uh, pour it into uh, a glass bottle. Take the cover off. There you go. And I mark on it uh, orderless terps, okay? Um, just to be make sure if you got your pussycat around, uh, mine doesn't go near it, but I do put the cover back on when I'm not using it as well, okay? And I mark it, okay, just in case. You never know. Okay, so we'll lay that there. And I'm going to start with my Eye the Tiger brushes. Okay, we're going to begin with our large one. It's the three quarter. Okay, there we go. And 
Now the cleanup is with odorless terps, uh, but other than that, we just use a paper towel for clean, cleaning our br brushes in between. Uh, if we get a lot of color on, we can always give them a swirl into the odorless terps, but other than that, we're fine, okay? So we're going to load up first with our lightning medium, okay? Now you can see I'm pushing down, pushing my bristles down, filling up that belly of that brush, okay? Making it absorb, there you go. And I go over here and cover my poppies. And if you go over your, um, at outside of your lines, it's okay, we can color outside of our lines now. We're allowed, okay? On my original, uh, I will show you again after, uh, it drained out a little bit, the red did, and I like it. It just adds a little bit of abs abstract to it, and uh, it's really cool. Now, you can see that I just um, kind of flattened one of my little ridges there. It wasn't quite dry, but it's okay. Basically, it is dry. You would wait if you were doing this at home. You would texture it in, go throw in a load of laundry or whatever, or Go sit out on the deck when the summertime comes and just relax a little bit until it dry totally. Okay, there we go. So I'm just giving my poppies uh, a great coat, really nice full coverage off the lightning medium. Lightning medium, like I said, it's for uh, changing, lightening your colors. If you want a lighter pink color you can add to the crimson and make it lighter or also it goes over texture so your pebio uh, slides off your ridges and gathers in your valleys to cause highlight and shade which you'll be seeing in a moment okay so we'll continue on here we go continue with our pods there our poppies. Now I used one, usually it's about um, probably close to two uh, bottle caps off, you know, depending on the size, of course. But I uh, only pour up the amount that I need. Okay. I reason why I use bottle caps is to save my color. It holds them and less paint uh, of this paint out because it does have a little bit of an odor to it. So you make sure you cap off your your paint. I can teach a class of 30 and, and you know, and we'll keep the odor down a lot if you, everyone caps off their uh, bottles and things and use the small bottle caps as your uh, as your holders. Okay, so there's always a way to do it. And you being at home and using this, you'll be using small bottle caps. Okay, I'm sure. Unless you want to make a really big piece. If you want to make a real statement. There you go. And please send me pictures, photographs of what you've, you've done with my design and things. I'm, I'd love to see them. Okay. And uh, yeah, have fun with it. This is an oil, of course, and it's not going to dry. Um, you, it will take all night, basically, for this to dry. Laying it flat, making sure you're not holding it up, and uh, so it'll run. I'm down here to the bottom grass, okay, being very careful over here on this side because I, those ridges are still quite tacky. So what I'm going to do is just let it run right over my piece and very lightly go over the ridges. Okay, there we go. And like I said, we're gonna go over the background. Uh, I'm not very particular over where I place the color or the lightning medium. Okay, so now we're going to clean our brush so I just place my brush in between that paper towel and just squeeze out the excess, okay? You're just squeezing it out. There you go. 
now I'm going to uh, go to the red part of the poppy, okay? Uh, the center uh, are black. I'm just gonna bring up my uh, picture for a moment here so we can see it. We're gonna be doing the red parts, okay? But if you get a bit of red in the center, I'm not going to worry about it because the black is going to cover that up. And then we're going to use the cream relief over it. OK, so right here, I had discussed um, with you that it ran. And look at that. I'm OK with that. This caused a little bit of pink uh, because I probably brushed it or whatever. I'm quite fine with that. Over here it ran. I'm pointing out all my boo-boos, okay? My happy accidents, is that what it is? Anyway, I'm okay with that. It looks fine to me, okay? And the type of piece it is, uh, it's such a glassy look to it that it's okay to, uh, you know, to let it flow a little, okay? Because the paint itself is very flowing, so we're okay. Alrighty, so I'm going to bring this down a little and we're going to start up here on the left hand side. I, I started on the left hand side, mainly because um, if I, I'm right handed, so if I started on my right hand side, I would probably get my arm and my clothes in it, okay, because it's, it's not going to dry and it's very liquid, so it's just to be, be a little careful. Okay, I am going to use my number instead of my big one, my three quarter. I'm going to be using my number 10, okay, my number 10 flat to uh, apply the red. Alrighty, because I'm working on a smaller piece and um, that way we don't need the large, the large brush, okay, especially for the pods and for the centers, but let's try the poppies with the number 10. Okay, I'm going to go straight into that crimson red. Okay, load it up, fully load, and go over to your poppy. There you go. And make sure that you hit the edges. You're going to notice in a few moments that it's going to fall off the highlighted ridges and fall into the dips and valleys, okay? So you can use your small brush, it's okay. I'm a big piece painter, so I probably would have used my large ones. I'm just wanting to show you with this 10 flat, it works perfectly fine. We will be using the 10 flat on our centers and pods anyway. So you can see right here, it's starting to, um, fall into the valleys causing a shadow and coming off the highlights causing a highlight okay you're covering up all of your texture that white texture let's uh, immediately go down uh, to the pod here okay and let's fill that in there you go and another pod there fill it in so cool. And after a minute or two, it starts to fall, fall into place, right? It's a couple little pods here and some here. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to go back to my large brush. Okay. So I'll go to my, my orderless terps and First of all, I will squeeze out the excess, okay? And I'll just give it a little cleaning with the odorless terps and wipe it off, okay? We're all good. Put that there. Okay, I'm going to go back with my large three quarter eye the tiger and fully load, there you go. Fully load into the red. And there you go. Because my texture paste is a, not as hard as what I would like it to be right yet, I find it a little, little easier 
to use my large ones like I'm not flattening down the ridges as much, okay? But we're fine. There you go. And the other one over here. So pretty. I am intentionally filling in the centers because I want to show you how cool it's going to be. Okay. And one here. It's a continuation of poppies and in Flanders Field where the poppies grow. Each one row by row. They, uh, they just kind of fill the fields, pictures off them. Many of you, I bet, have been in Flanders Field. Um, my, my dad was in Flanders Field many, many years ago. He was a young, young guy in the army. Okay, I'm going to pour up a little bit of my crimson color. So I've kind of ran out and I'm pouring up another little bit. There we go. It's better to use less. Less is better, you know, for pouring and stuff. But make sure that you really load your brush. You, you notice that I'm not skimping on this, okay? I want that to dry rock hard and, uh, you know, be really glossy, okay? The look of it is what I'm trying to say. Okay, and there's one more here. And it's basically just base coating, making sure that you have a lot of paint on your brush. This here is running over a little and I'm okay. That's running a little and I'm okay with that. So you're just letting it set a little, okay? So let's just wipe out the excess, take our paper towel and clean off our brush and we'll clean it in the odorless terps. Okay, there you go, just to remove that color and lay it down on the side. Okay, now for the bottom part, um, and that's still a little, little bit, um, you can almost feel the texture paste is not really drying there really, but you can see uh, this is what I use with mine, which you, you can't see through. This is what I used here with the DecoArt uh, Media texture paste. So either or, it makes a wonderful combination to use both too, right? Okay. Now, so we're going to use, uh, still stay with our three quarter, I think, for the bottom uh, part. And we'll load up our green gold, which is a beautiful vintage color. And I'll start again on my left hand side. And at the bottom, probably because that's where everything is growing, is from the bottom up. And at a full coverage, right up through. And I very lightly went over my texture paste there because I didn't want it to squat. Okay. Now you can see I'm using the uh, chisel part of my brush, okay? Because I want it to be like um, grass and foliage and I want to bump into those poppies. Don't stay away, okay? Don't stay away from the base of your poppies and stuff because the poppies are growing with the greenery. Okay, so we gotta we gotta kind of make it look a little like they're not separated. There we go, like this. Now you can see over here there was a bit of red that ran out. I added it with my green, and I was okay with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm not going to wipe off my green yet. I'm going to pour up a little bit of my black into a small bottle cap, okay? Because you're not gonna use a lot of this. Uh, and black is not transparent, okay? I repeat, 
the black is not transparent. Okay, it says it is on the, the bottle, but it's not. I use it as the centers and I use it to add to my transparencies, to my greens, my reds, and that to cause a bit of a shade, but it's not really transparent and you'll find that out real fast, okay? Um, so we've got our green on our brush and I'm just gonna dip very, the very corner. I'm just gonna see if you can see me here doing this. The very corner on my brush that has the green on it. And I'm going to add it to the side. See what I'm doing there? I'm adding a bit of shadow to that uh, right hand side of my piece. And I'll go back with the green again. Apply the green, mix the green in. I like this, you see that there, a little bit of the red is coming through because I just hit one of the poppies and the red is coming through on the black and green. I'm loving it, okay? It's really turning out well. Okay, so the, the main shadow part will be over here on our right hand side, okay, area. And add a little bit more green, just green to it. Okay, I think we're good there. So I'm gonna show you my very bottom part. See that, I went right to the bottom and I put the dark shadow over on that right hand side, okay? just to give it, and when I did it, I just did the corner off my dirty brush with my green in it, and I just kind of chisel that in, okay? Now, you can see that, uh, and especially on my larger piece, uh, in between the poppies there, there were some leaves and what we like to call filler leaves and stuff, okay? So I'm going to wipe off my big brush again here now and give it a little rinse into the odorless terps. There you go. Once you finish for the day though, you can always, don't forget to wash your brush in soap and water. Really good, okay? Alrighty, so we're going to use the small flat, okay? And we're going to add a few little filler leaves to in behind uh, those poppies there. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my green, reload my green, and I'm going to add a, like a, with the chisel part of my flat, I'm just going to touch, push, and add a few filler leaves there. On a bigger piece, of course, this would show up more and you would add more to it, right? Okay, with the small uh, brush with loaded in green, just touch in the corner of that red as well. And you can see how you're, you know, you can add a little bit of red to underneath there to give it a little bit of a contrast. There is red in your piece. Of course, your poppies are red and it would almost look like there's a little bit of a shade, red shade. Okay, there you go. So that's pretty good for that. Alrighty. And like I say, this piece is only 11 uh, by 14. So, um, you know, you can tell it's not, uh, not as big. But if you had a larger piece, you would just continue the flow. Alrighty. Okay, I'm going to clean off that brush. And at this point, I'm going to go with my cream relief and I'm going to um, outline my outer edges and make some strokes down here through through with, with the black, okay? I chose the black because, um, you know, you could have used gold as well, uh, but I chose black because the poppies uh, more stately and I just thought it looked a lot nicer with the black frame. So that's why I chose black. So your Pebio Cream Relief, 
uh, it's black. It has a black cover on it and a white cap. Okay. When you get yours at the beginning, you take off both the white cap and the black cap. Okay. Now this is very important because inside here, there's a little aluminum covering that seals your tube. Okay. That has to be broken. Alrighty, so you just get a, a, a sharp stylus or whatever, and you crack open that aluminum, okay? You immediately put on your white and black cap together. So it's on there. Now you remove your black cap, okay? On the very tip, there's already a hole in this nib okay do not and i repeat do not i'm laughing now because the first time i did it uh i had i had a common mail and i thought oh good so i tried to squeeze my tube and no nope, nothing wouldn't come out so i called company and i said you know can't get she said well did you look inside there's a seal i said oh my goodness so then of course i broke the seal put my cap on took off my black and I immediately cut off the first quarter with my scissors to make a hole. There's already a hole in it, okay? So we're going to go down to our piece, begin with our poppies. And I'm going to outline where I'm going to put the centers. I'm going to outline my poppies. And this is this type of outlining. I like to call it, I'm fudging because as I'm pouring or moving the cream relief, like applying it, it's fudging in with the wet uh, Pebio Vitrail and I'm liking that look, okay? It just gives it a really unique look. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm applying it. Um, making the centers okay going around i'm not really touching in, in all areas most areas i am but right here for example um i'm gonna move this forward a little bit okay there you go and i just kind of hit and miss okay in areas here you go Going around the center. Centers is where we add the black and the beads, okay? Here you go. You can even see where you made the form off the texture with the palette knife. For the pods, just a circle and down. Just come around, circle and down. Round and down. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to wipe off my nib on a paper towel. Move that over so you can see what I'm doing here. The paper towel got a little bit of the odorless terps on it. So I'm just going to wipe the nib off so that the uh, Pebio Vitrail don't stick into your nib. Okay. Now also on my piece, I'm just going to cover this for a minute to show you uh, on my piece here. Um, I went around with the Pebio uh, with the cream relief, but I also added markings uh, right down through the green. Can you see that? I hope you can. Okay, so you can go from underneath there go right over some of the poppies. So I'm gonna do that now and show you how that looks. That effect really looks cool, okay? So you take your cream relief. Whoops, it looks like we forgot one of the poppies. It sticks out like a sore thumb and it's not done. There you go. And add the center, okay. So I'm going to come from in behind and I'm gonna add there you go. And you can come right over 
over your poppies if you want to with a few markings, okay? It just adds another little bit of texture to your piece. Okay, I'm going to clean off my nib again on that paper towel that has the odorless terps on it. And I'm going to cap it off, okay? So it seals it tight. And make sure that it, you hear that click. And I like to just push up on the metal part of the tube. So next time that you're ready to use it, it'll be ready for you, okay? All righty, so now what's next? Okay, let's fill in our centers with black. I'm going to use my um, Eye the Tiger four round. So you're using your three. I put these three in a set because those are the ones that you're going to use for your Pebio by Trail and you won't need anything else when you use that, right? Your three, that's your set and your go-to set for your, your Pebio by Trail. Okay, so I'm going to load up with the black. Now, like I said, the black is a very intense color and the black is there in the small cap already and I'm just going to fill in the centers okay a little bit I am not going to really flow flow it in like I did the red and the green because it's a very intense co uh, color and it tends to expand okay but what will hold it in there is your uh, cream relief, okay? Your cream relief is going to hold it in there and it'll stay in, okay? There you go. So we're going to fill in our centers with the black, okay? And go. We've got a lot of poppies on this piece. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, cool. Now, if you hit that cream relief with your brush, don't worry about it. Okay, it's not going to matter. The pods, uh, I just added a little bit, kind of smooshed that down in the center there, that cream relief. There you go. Now, go to your orderless terps and clean out your brush, okay? Get all of that out of there and wipe it dry on a paper towel. Okay, lay it down. Perfect. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add our seed beads. Okay, now most of you will know that I love the Hobby Lobby. Okay, for years and years and years, I always went to the Hobby Lobby. Crossover in Maine, first place in Bangor would be the Hobby Lobby. Just love it. I'm missing that right now, but I'm sure it'll all go back to normal. And uh, can't wait for my trips to the Hobby Lobby. These are called Bead Treasures. They're glass seed beads. I have the antique uh, brass, I have the black, and I have the crystal okay um on this piece it's a vintage piece i i think i'm going to add just see what the antique bronze or the antique brass ones look like okay and uh, i could open up the pack here now there we go okay so I'm just going to pour a few in my hand and there you go. And they look really um, brassy looking, really nice. Okay. So I take them in my finger like so, and I just drop them in the centers. Okay. That's the brass ones. Yeah, it looks cool. Another brass one. We'll do, I'll add the crystal ones too to show you what. Uh, okay, I love glass beads, even a little bit on the pods. And you know what? If you add a little bit, say if you 
you got clumsy and just kind of hit your hand and they fell out over your green area, don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay. Alrighty. So that's the brass ones right here. Cool. Alrighty. And let's do a uh, crystal. Crystal ones. That's the crystal ones here. They're in really cool containers because sometimes they come in just little plastic pouches and they tear. Oh, I'm liking the crystal as well. Okay. Crystal ones, yeah. They're at the Hobby Lobby, like I say. Or, you know, I bet even Michael's too, you can get the seed beads, right? For this. Many of you probably have them at home anyway. Doing any creating. Okay, we can put a few on the green part. And we might as well try the, the black. Really nice snaps on the covers though, so. Keep small in place. And those are the black ones. So yeah, I think the crystal ones and the brass for this particular piece shows up. Okay. Alrighty. You can even mix them in with the crystal and the whatever. I love playing with beads. I love it. Okay. So that's it for that part. Now all you got to do is wait for it to dry. Your beads are put in place. Uh, once it's dried totally, uh, you can sign your piece down here with your liner and your paint or your, if you have a, a signing pen or whatever, uh, you can come down here and sign it. Okay, so that is uh, my video on my piece today. Um, it's called Where the Poppies Grow. Talk with you a little bit. And, okay, uh, so I hope you had fun doing this today. And uh, any questions? Please uh, email me uh, at annamarie860 at gmail.com or go to my website. There's a lot of pattern packets there. Um, any questions, just uh, let me know or FaceTime me or whatever. Okay, so have fun and uh, I hope you like it. Thank you for painting with me.